Hello, nobody watching this. Welcome to a unique video on this channel. So, uh, I have been a fan of Matt Pat for a while now. Really enjoy a lot of stuff he works on. So, why not make a video debunking one of the worst videos he's probably ever made? Uh, Dead of Dark Souls suck. Dark Souls, one of my favorite games of all time. Matt Pat's one of my favorite, most favorite YouTubers of all time. I like him and Gerard is also in this video. Completionist. I've never uh, really watched any of his videos, but uh, a lot of people say he's good, so I'm just gonna accept that he's probably really good. And uh, sorry, my dialogue, my dialogue here, so I'm just doing it. I have a lot of things that I want to say here. And uh, I'm not blaming them, I'm not saying they're bad, just that I want to point out all the things in this video just in case, like. You watch this video, and you think, oh, Dark Souls must be horrible, it's not. I just want to clear up a lot of things about this, and point out why Dark Souls is the best game of all time. There's a lot of points in this video that make absolutely no sense. I'm going to go through them all. We're not going to watch this whole video. I'm just going to say all the things that I want to say, let the words fall out. I'm sorry, I'm in the reference. Post script. Kind of. In some way. Uh, I forgot to mention this uh, when I was doing the intro there's just so many things I wanted to say and I just completely forgot about it I will be the first person in this discussion to admit Dark Souls is a very flawed game there are some, there are some big flaws in the game um, the whole Isola section and the bed of chaos are complete just we're completely rushed there are certain mechanics in the game that don't make uh, very much sensor should have been improved upon. Uh, there's some things that are kind of certainly hidden. There are unfair chunks of the game. Other stuff that I forgot. This game is nowhere near perfect. It is a flawed experience. It was only the second Souls Light game. So they still didn't have very much figured out at the time. Sekiro was much better combat. But it's still the best game of all time. Every game has its flaws. Dark Souls has its flaws, but none of them were pointed out in this video. <laughs> There's all the things I said were bad about it don't make any sense. And so, let's get into it. I don't know if you've noticed this one recently, but there are a lot of sequels and reboots in the gaming industry today. So praise the sun for Dark Souls, a new IP that's gotten itself a cult following, rapidly gaining in popularity Indeed. by bringing old school NES hard into the modern generation of consoles. You know that when a game's tagline is, you will die, you're in for a good time. But in our excitement over this new franchise, have we overlooked something? Are the Dark Souls games games actually any good, or are they fundamentally broken and flawed? Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, welcome to Deadlock! It's a, it's a weird thing to debate since some people talk about if Dark Souls suck. I mean, there are people who think that it's bad, but it's the internet. People are gonna say that. I also just noticed, look at this dislike ratio, it's pretty bad for game theory. I mean, sure, he has videos that have a lot of dislikes because, of, like, Sans is nuts and stuff, but still. Uh, we're not gonna watch this intro. The, uh, the intro deadlocked. And we're not, gonna, we're not gonna watch every single second of this. I'm just gonna say the things that are important. Uh, I'll point out the points that are important. I'm just gonna skip past the intro. I'll put the video in, like, uh, an ad card. Vengeance will be mine! Giant Dad, be my strength! Any discussion of Dark Souls has to start with the difficulty. The series became famous for bringing old school difficulty into the modern day gaming scene. Hey, just because- I can tell that Gerard does not want to argue this point, by the way, just because of how bad his points are. It's, 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 it's acted. You can, you, you can tell. He, 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 he likes Dark Souls, I'm pretty sure. There are countless other games with incredibly detailed dungeons and castles that I just sprinted right through on my way to the next piece of loot or quest item. Hey, and uh, the reason that we're not just gonna watch this whole video is, and the reason that I have like this tab pulled up, 
like I was showing the whole window instead of going like full screen or only showing the video because I don't just it, it, it'll make it seem like I'm just re-uploading this video and I don't want to do that I don't just want to re-upload this video you go watch all of it yourself if you want to I'm just gonna I'm only gonna talk about things I'm only gonna show when I talk about things that are important I couldn't I'm pausing this video so much by the way tell you a thing about the level design, but Dark Souls is burned into my mind. This isn't a game you run through your first time, this is a game you memorize. A game that has you paying attention to every floor tile, every enemy placement, and every item box. Damn mimic boxes. I know! It's a game with dramatic stakes. You can't get careless, which forces you to be aware of every single detail the designers put in. Yeah, and I guess I'll make a point here that uh, that is true. <laughs> the game is very well designed. I'm going to put in the iCards a link to a video about how good the game designer in Dark Souls is. Probably here. It's really good. It's a really good video, and the game design is really good. I could go, I can make a whole video series about how good the uh, game design is in Dark Souls. It pretty much employs every single game design principle there is. And uh, a good game design video by uh, Snowman Gaming will give you a better idea of why that is the case. At the point of a game to immerse you in another world? If so, Dark Souls absolutely does that. Which brings me to what I was originally trying to say. A difficult game is fine if the difficulty is fair and comes from the gameplay. Ooh, this is uh, th this is when it starts getting bad. Dark Souls is difficult for unfair reasons, and that unfairness ultimately undermines the immersive experience you just described. First, you have no idea where to go at. Hey, before he gets into this, I'm just gonna say, uh, this point. A lot of people say that Dark Souls, oh, Dark Souls isn't that hard, or stuff like that. And I would say that's, uh, you're on the right track. But you're not quite there. Dark Souls is a difficult game, but it is a fair game. I'm just saying it's completely wrong. Uh, Dark Souls is a very fair game. It doesn't, like... Uh, what the internet thinks of as a hard game is a rage game like uh, Cat Mario, I Want to Be the Guy, Get Over It by the Bennett Foddy. Games designed for you to not win, for you to have to use trial and error to get through the game over and over again. You have to play through it over again because you're dying all the time and it just gets really annoying and it's frustrating the points for your rage but Dark Souls is different it actually employs good game design unlike rage games where the whole point is that the game design is very bad and uh, it gives you signs it teaches you uh, a lot of mechanics sure there are unfair parts of the games like the Anna Orlando archers are crap uh, but uh, that's the exception rather than the Norman Dark Souls there. Once you like get used to the gameplay, uh, you can uh, like play through the game uh, better once you like understand, uh, once you get more into the game and you start understanding how the game works, uh, then it's going to be a lot better. Sorry this dialogue so just joined in, there's just so many different ideas at once. Dark Souls is just too good of a game. Time. Which provides you a great experience where you're discovering and connecting with a world independent of any obvious guidepost. And also, I, he's talking like Dark Souls has bad level design, even though it's widely accepted that Dark Souls is one of the best world designs of all time. We also talk about that in the good game design. There's so many good things about Dark Souls I can't probably cover in one video. I have to point in a different direction. Also, Vadi Va, uh, Vadi Vidya, his whole channel is Dark Souls, except for a few things here and there. Check out his channel if you just want a whole channel based on Dark Souls. Except for when it doesn't. Yes, it's great you get to discover your own path, but when the most essential item in the game also oh. happens to be the most. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dissect this so hard. Absurdly hidden? Yeah, a little bit of direction, a clue, anything would be nice. I, of course, am talking about the rusted iron ring. Ugh, 
This is gonna hurt, huh? Oh yeah. This ring, which enables you to quickly walk through water, an ability, mind you, that is necessary for huge chunks of the game, can only be found by leaping off an elevator onto a somewhat secret platformer, leaping into another ledge in a game that is far from a platformer, let's be honest, then climbing up a tower and crouching in a bird's nest so you can be flown back to the tutorial level. Without reading a strategy guide or an online tutorial, you would never know this. Same thing with Seeking Soul the Air. And this is the type of obscurity- Let's go to the air. Before we get into this. Okay, so. If you look in the comments, this point is what's in there the most. Uh, is what is debated the most. Not, not debated, it's uh, the most dissected. It's like, hey, this point is totally wrong. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's the whole comment section. And it's true. So, he talked about the Iron Rusted Rain. And he says that it is the most essential item in the game. You need it for huge, vast areas. You absolutely need it. It's an essential item and it's absurdly hidden. Okay. It is very well hidden, but you do not need it at all. There are tons of people who have beaten Dark Souls without it. Because it only lets you walk through water fast, which like isn't that cool. And it's, yeah, it's like, it's not that good of an ability. I mean, it's certainly convenient, but it's not essential for huge chunks of the game. You only need it during uh, the end of Blight Town, certain segments, like small sections of other levels. Like really small, like one room. And then uh, there is, in the Dark Root Basin, there's the lake. And the bottom of Sun's Fortress. Okay, so Blight Town. If you want to go exploring, it is convenient to have it, but you don't need to go exploring in the places. You only have to go through a certain section. You don't need it. You don't need it at all. It's only like a very small portion of the level. And small little rooms. Yeah, very small portions. The lake. Nothing's really going on in the lake. There's only the Hydra, and the Hydra's super easy. And uh, bottom of sense forest, uh, for fortress. Yes, yeah, so you do need the rain for that, or you're completely screwed down there. But it's 100% optional. You only need it if you're uh, using a weapon that needs demon titanite. And uh, yeah, it's just completely optional. The iron, uh, rusted iron rain, not essential in any way, shape, or form. You do not need it at all. It is certainly hidden, but it's a great little secret. I love that section where you go through the, begin uh, the beginning of the game again. It's, it's really, this is a really bad point. It makes absolutely no sense. You would never, sure, but that doesn't excuse the game for being sloppy. Oh, okay, hey there. Let's not resort to name calls. But it I was, uh, I don't really understand how Dark Souls is sloppy, but I'll, I'll, I'll hear him out before I dissect it. It's true, from the first moments of the game. For example, you get to select your starting gift. I've already talked about how good the world design is and stuff. We're gonna get to combat eventually, don't worry. Knowing that this is a hard game, I go with a tiny being's ring, whose description says it slowly regenerates health. After not seeing Watch my this. health go up, I read Hopefully. online to find out that it actually increases the amount of health you have slightly, not that you regenerate health. If it's a typo, it's sloppy. Okay, yeah, this is a translation mistake in the Japanese version and other versions of the game. It's perfectly fine. Nothing to do with the development of the game, it's just a translation mistake. And it's just one thing he makes this huge deal about. It. It's just a little thing that gifts. Uh, the starting gifts aren't even that essential to the game, they're only for the very beginning of the game. Actually, they all get replaced eventually. Uh, unless you get something like a twin humanity. And, uh, it's still one of the best starting items anyways, like, even though it doesn't regenerate health still, it gives you a little health boost, which isn't that great, but the other gifts are that great. Maybe, like, Master Keys are okay, and humanity is nice but you already get enough humanity anyways if it's i want to be a pyromancer and obviously i see that the intelligence stat is for magic abilities so for my first seven levels i dump my experience points into intelligence 
After not seeing any improvement in my character, I read online to find that pyromancy, despite it being about fire-like spells, actually has nothing to do with intelligence, and that I should be leveling up dexterity instead? Okay, I'm gonna explain this point. So, pyromancy is a special type of, ma of magic in the game. Basically, it's meant for other classes as well as his own dedicated class. Yeah, and everybody's pretty much meant to use it. So, yeah, everybody is leveling up Dex at least a little bit. Uh, Dex isn't the best thing in the world in Dark Souls, but it is helpful and other, and it's a physical ability. So, like Knight or uh, Rogue classes are able to use a uh, dabble in pyromancy. Because the point is that you're supposed to be able to use it with any class a little bit. So if you have to pump a new stat in order to uh, be a pyro in order to get into pyromancy, it's just gonna turn off a lot of people and like, no, I'm not gonna use pyromancy, even though it's meant for everybody. And uh, like the other two magics use different stats, so use two different stats. Uh, miracles use faith, and intelligence is used for sorceries. So there needs to be a new stat, and then it has to be dex. Thanks, Obama! And don't even get me started on the item humanity! Perhaps the most crucial gameplay mechanic affecting everything from your stats, to the way NPCs treat you, and I'm left to basically reverse engineer to figure out what the hell the programming in the game is all about? I don't understand this point. Humanity isn't... I mean, when you get in-depth into the humanity system, it can get complicated, but it's not really that complicated for what you need to understand in order to beat the game. Basically, how humanity works is... You like a humanity level, basically. You gain, you gain humanity in a number of ways. And you can use it to reverse your hollowing, turn you back into a human, and then you can use that, and you can use more humanity after that and, uh, to make it so that you get more SS flasks from uh, your checkpoint, your bonfire. And that's pretty much all, all you need to know. There's more to it than that, but that's all that uh, you need to know in order to beat the game, really. And if you're human, you have better stats, but you can get invaded. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> There's not too much to get into unless you really want to dive into it. I mean, when you start the game, it's not going to make that much sense, but as you go on, you're going to figure it out eventually. I didn't have to look anything up in order to understand it after the first few areas. Sorry about that. Freaking Loxton. How dare he make videos while I'm recording mine. What a jerk. The difficulty comes from all the sources that are unfair to the gamer. But even if you inserted a halfway decent tutorial, the tutorial is really good in Dark Souls. I don't know what I'm just talking about. It's a really well. It's not the best tutorial ever, but it is a good one. I don't know what you're talking about. It teaches you without telling you everything. It tells you the controls, but even Hyper Light Drifter tells you the controls. So, come on. You're expecting to not tell you the controls. The controls are a little confusing and non-traditional. So if it didn't tell you the controls, you'd be confused. Like I showed one of my friends Dark Souls once. I had him play it, and he didn't read any of the like controls, and he tried to attack, and it said, "Yeah, he kept trying to attack when it said he was pressing the X button, and that's the use item." And so he was healing instead of actually attacking with the bumpers. And a bit more direction into how to get and use some of these essential items at the time of when you need them. What are you left with? I don't know what he's talking about, by the way. I would I would talk about that more in depth, but I have no idea what he's talking about. Lackluster fighting mechanics. Ooh, this is a big one. Wow! Being trapped in that game really made you angsty toward it, huh? <sighs> I was watching Eagle Raptor's sequel IS video on Ocarina of Time, and something occurred to me. Dark Souls has the same problems. People think Ocarina is incredible and that Z targeting for fighting is super exciting and immersive. We're gonna rip but in the this end, part. that fighting boils down to time. 
wasted time waiting for the enemy to attack or to drop their guard so you can attack. Dark Souls is the same way. Block, block, hit, block, block, hit. Or if it's a boss, run around behind it. Smack, 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 smack. Run around before the area of effect spell kicks in. That's practically every single enemy in the game, Matt. I would argue that there's a little more variety than that. But even if there wasn't, that is a real experience, Gerard. I just left. Okay, uh, there's still quite a bit left. I found this comment by Vanilla Olaf. I'll try to find it. And here it is. I'll highlight it here. Uh, he talks about the Iron Rusted Rain, but we've already talked about that. Completely optional. You don't need it. And, uh, Okay, I'll just, I'll just read it. Uh, when the Game Grumps played Demon Souls, which is the predecessor to Dark Souls, basically the same uh, combat, uh, Aaron, who made the Sucolatus video, which he's talking about, said that, uh, that the 3D combat in uh, Zelda did not apply to all the Dark Souls, and he released that combat. I have no idea what he's talking about. Just because it uses targeting mechanics, and it's in 3D, does that mean it has the exact same combat mechanics. Dark Souls is a very exciting intuitive game where you're locked in combat with this creature and it's exciting because you and the creature constantly exchanging blows and dodging each other is, is uh, really thrilling. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's only two enemies in the game that work like that. That have a shield and they wait at least a little bit between attacks and even then it's the Black Knights which are some of the hardest enemies uh, in the mid game and early game and they don't wait that long between attacks they're just pretty much shielding in between their attacks which are pretty decently frequent the only enemy that really works the way he's talking about is uh at least with the sucolitis thing is the shield enemies uh it's the spear shield enemies are uh, early in the game during the uh, Undead Berg section. And even then, sure they wait around forever before they attack, but you can kick down their shields. It's supposed to teach you to kick down people's shields and find new creative solutions around uh, enemies like that. Other than that, all the enemies don't really do that. Not many enemies have shields. And if they do, they're constantly attacking you anyways. And the thing about each boss being the same, no, they all have a unique design and unique uh, attack pattern, and uh, it's different <laughs> pretty much every time there's new attacks to learn and avoid, pattern recognition on how to dodge an attack, I have no idea what it's talking about. Shows aren't even that good at Dark Souls, you should be dodging mostly. This isn't Sekiro where you're constantly parrying all the time. Even then, the parrying in Sekiro I've heard is really awesome. I haven't had a chance to play the game yet. I really want to someday, but I've heard that's a really awesome mechanic, but that's different from blocking. Dark Souls. Also, this foot is, is using the Drake, Drake sword, so whoever's playing is a total nub. There is this unbelievably frustrating section called Sen's Fortress that has you platforming your way all the way to the top, walking narrow pathways, avoiding traps, dealing with these really obnoxious enemies. And you finally get to the roof, only to see this oh my God. giant in the distance. Man, Pat, I know you don't want me to debunk your video, but you don't have to interrupt it like that. And I stood there, watching it move, calculating whether or not this creature posed a threat to me. I'm really confused about this section. I mean, Sense Fortress is hard, but it's not that brutal. I guess he didn't find the, the bonfire. I guess he missed to that. I mean, it is hidden. It's not that well hidden. We have to map have for not finding that. It's kind of important to find all the items and stuff in that area. Because if I died at that point, I would have to go back to the first bonfire I was at. So if you're, if he's talking about that golem, there in golem, um, this is very confusing. He's in a boss fight. I don't know. It's, he, he doesn't describe this very well. Like, what are you talking about? Big enemies? All the enemies in this section are big. And start all over again. But that, Gerard, is fear. That is stakes. And that 
is good game design. Design that gets you to care about what happens to your character. So then what did happen, Matt? I died when a giant hidden behind me threw an explosive boulder. He's clearly not in the boss fight because he got hit by the giant. With the boulder, unless he didn't kill it, which, why would you not kill it? It's not that hard. It's not that well hidden. Death, man. Cheap death. Perhaps. But, in those moments where I was frantically trying to find the next bonfire while on fire, those were perhaps the most engaged I had been in a game in a long time. And at the end of the day, what qualifies as a good game to me? It's a game that's immersive and makes me feel something. Is Dark Souls immersive? You betcha. We talked about that at the beginning. But does it give you the feels? Absolutely. Because you're given so little information, it keeps you hungry for the next clue as to what the heck is going on in this world. But ultimately, it doesn't tell you anything in the end, alright? Quiet you, this is my closing argument. I stop doing these because everybody leaves during the closing arguments. I don't even know if there's anything worth talking about in the closing arguments. But, uh, in terms of lore, which I never really talk about in depth, I don't know why they didn't talk about it at all, it's... Uh, and... Even if they would complain about it, oh, it was too complicated, I had a... Decent idea of what was going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, did, I had a decent idea of what was going on in the game. After I beat it. And it's not that hard to figure out the basics, you just need to read a couple item descriptions, watch a couple of videos by Vadi Vadi, which I... Talked about, hopefully, put in the end cards. Not end cards, uh, eye cards, maybe in the end cards too, I don't know. Hell not. But and, anyways, is it, the lore is extremely fascinating. I definitely recommend you look into it uh, after you beat the game. It's definitely essential to understand what's going on in Dark Souls, to look into the lore a little bit, but it's not that hard to get into, like, the basics. Yeah, uh, I mean, once you start getting into the details, yeah, it gets super complicated, but just the base stuff learn doesn't take very long. The basic mechanics of the world and the history doesn't take very long to learn. You just need to read a couple of descriptions here and there. It, it, and it does tell you a little bit. And the little as some of it doesn't tell you about uh, the ending is what makes it better because the two endings are just so morally ambiguous that it makes the endings more interesting. Because you're constantly wondering after you beat the game, what choice should I have made? What's the right choice? Is it right to let the fire burn on or burn out? Does it even matter when they get to like Dark Souls 2 and 3? Did, was, did my choice even matter? That's the question. Even though it doesn't tell you all that much in the end, that's what's so exciting. It lets the player come up with their own interpretations, which has resulted in a vibrant and active fan community. I could talk a whole video about that, just that one sentence he said. That, that's not going to be his own whole video. The point of the Dark Souls lore is to make your own interpretation of it. That's the point. That's uh, what the creator Miyazaki wanted you to do, is to make your own interpretation of the lore. He didn't, he purposefully left details out so that you could fill in the gaps by yourself. I, uh, there's more to this point. I could make a whole, as I said, as I said, I can make a whole video just about this one topic of how you're meant to fill in the details by yourself, and most people already have done that. So yeah, good game. The Dark Souls is challenging, not just from a difficulty sense, but very much like a complex piece of art. You chew on it, you think about it, digest it, discuss it. It's an empty vessel that the player gets to fill in. This game is truly a roller coaster of emotions. You're tense practically the whole time. You get frustrated, you rage quit, you come back, you learn, you get better, and finally you triumph, and the sense of achievement is incredible. But beyond just gameplay, there are moments that are legitimately shocking, fearful, even moments that I found incredibly sad. I don't think I've ever wanted to give up on a fight more than I did with Sif the Great Wolf. Once this little creature started limping around- I think the little creature's supposed to be a joke. But dog is anything but little. 
Unless you're a giant, but you're not in this game. The arena. That attention to detail couldn't be in a game anyone would consider sloppy. Couple those things with incredible enemy design and an atmosphere that is just oppressive the whole game, and you have maybe not what many people would call a fun game, but there's this is a fun game. Sorry, I'm jerking my knuckles. It's just something I do it's unconsciously. You have an incredibly rewarding one. <laughs> But a game still has to be playable and enjoyable to play in order for it to be good, Matthew. Players shouldn't have to reverse hack the programming algorithms to figure out the effects of items or stats. And they certainly shouldn't be lied to about what an item does by the inventory screen. Combat shouldn't be this repetitious slog, and it should be all worth something. The ending of Dark Souls is the modern day equivalent of congratulations. A hard, tedious slog that results in an ending that isn't satisfying and doesn't bring you any closure. You compare the game to an empty vessel that players fill in. I got the reverse. By the time I finished the game with the lackluster boss fight and obtuse endings, I was the one feeling left empty. Wow. Oh, well, we've already discussed why the ending of Dark Souls is great. Uh, and the boss fight. I don't know why he says lackluster, it's really awesome, I don't know why he said that. It beats the music, but that's not even, the music is great, and it means a lot in terms of lore. So I don't know what he's talking about with that, we're not going to watch, uh, this is the end of the, the video, we're not going to go any further. Basically, uh, my conclusion here is that, while... Uh, we shouldn't just be like, oh, people are saying this game is great, okay, it's great, oh, let's just all accept that this game is awesome, okay. We're all just gonna follow the leader, oh man, it's just great, we're not gonna question it at all. I get why you want to question if this game is good, to uh, just take all expectations away, leave everything away, and just look at the game and see if it's good. I understand that to take a new, get a new perspective on this game. But, that's <laughs> after you do that, it's like, okay, this game is still awesome. And, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just, I can't even say anything anymore, just like, this is a great game. And, uh, sure, we shouldn't just blindly accept that everybody loves this game, we should be questioning it, but once you start doing that, it's like this game is awesome, and just making a whole video about how it sucks doesn't make much sense because it's an amazing game. I wish everybody accepted that now. And there are videos out there that say Dark Souls sucks, but as they're few and far between, and it's just just experience no matter what. I had barely even heard about the game. I, I I mean, I watched the game like a little bit before I got it, but I didn't know very much uh, about it when I got it. The internet thought of it if it was going to be a good game, and it turned out to be my favorite game of all time after I played it. Yeah, I I understand trying to get a new fresh perspective and question what people are saying, but. Yeah, it, if what they say ends up being true, there's no point in continuing that uh, path. Trying to go against the grain too much just ends up getting annoying. This conclusion was kind of sloppy. Hopefully I added it together to where it sounded like an actual person rather than a robot. But that ends this video. Someday I'll probably make a few discussion videos about Dark Souls. I was planning on making more discussion videos in general at some point. Not reaction video. This is a reaction video. I don't know. It's slash discussion. Someday I'm gonna, I, I'll make just pure discussion videos. And there'll be probably be a few Dark Souls ones. I'm excited about that. Favorite game of all time. And Dark Souls. It's not suck. Alright, I had to do a postscript there because I forgot to say that something in the intro that was pretty important. And, uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, uh, leave a subscribe, leave a notification bell, and I hope 
I'll see you all next time.